Okay, now in this section, we'll continue with uh, some of the basic switching concepts. Now, majorly, we'll, we'll get into the command line. We'll try to understand the different types of switches we have, and that's just called hierarchy of switches, and then some of the basic configurations on the switches. So, let us start with some uh, uh, discussing on different types of switches we have. Now, in the switches, we got two categories of switches we have unmanageable switches and manageable switches. Now the major difference between these two is in case of manageable switches we can get into the command line they do have the console port just like we do on the routers and we can verify some show commands and also we can do some advanced switching concepts like VLANs, trunking, spanning tree we can verify all these things how they work and also we can make some changes to the existing technologies we can optimize them we can make them to work much better so the major difference is the command line. But when you talk about unmanageable switches, they are just plug and play. So plug and play means they, you just connect the power supply and then you can start using it. They do the job of a switching, like identifying the device based on the MAC address. Uh, it's the same thing what we discussed up to now, but you cannot do any changes. You cannot verify them. But whereas manageable switches also plug and play, you can, you can still use them without doing any configurations. But we can do a lot of configurations in that which are generally used in our advanced switching options so that is something what we do implement and test some of the advanced switching technologies on the manageable switches now some of the switches you find in the small size networks uh, we call them as unmanageable switches the normal switches we can say whereas uh, manageable switches where we can we can manage that's what command line access now the next thing we'll see here the cisco hierarchy now Cisco develop uh, design all the switches in three level hierarchy. We have something called access level switches, uh, similar to routers, which are low end series routers. Generally, we call them as layer two switches. Now these switches can connect to the computers and they can identify the device based on the MAC address and they can forward the traffic based on the MAC address. Typically your 1900, 2900 series switches, which are more commonly used at the end locations. End location means uh, connecting to some end, end devices, we can say. Now, uh, there are some other high end switches, we call them as distribution and core level switches. So, the distribution level switches are, are typically your next level switches, which are somewhat better speed processing, uh, processing switches, which supports more number of ports. Uh, 3550, 3560, and 3750 switches. We call them as L3 switches or layer 3 or multi layer switches. Now, the major advantage we get here is they do the job of a layer 2. That's what uh, identifying the device based on the MAC address and then forward the traffic based on the MAC address. That is what we call as layer 2 job. Not only that, they can also be connected to a router and we can run some routing protocol. Uh, more like they can use this particular port as a layer 3 port and we can do some routing kind of jobs here. So that's what we call as, that's the reason we call them as layer 3 switches or multi-layer switches. Now the same thing core level switches also are capable of doing that. Now uh, they can also do the layer 3 job like 4500, 6500 series switches we call them as core level switches. Okay so the next thing we'll see some of the basic initial configurations on the switch. Now if you want to configure a switch, we just need to do the same thing like uh, what we did on the routers. We need to connect our router to the console cable and then connecting back to the computer, connecting a 9 pin port on the computer side, RJ45 side, a console cable on the routers. So the same thing console connection, if you want to see the command line just like we did on the routers. And the show commands are almost same, you can see. Uh, the same modes you have, you have some basic user mode and then privilege mode. All the show commands are same, so I'm not getting into that much more in detail here. And the show MAC address table, we have seen this command if you remember to see the MAC table entries. And the show interface status command which will show you the interface status like whether it is connected or not. It shows them different options like connected or not connected or a disabled state, something like that which is in shutdown state. So this kind of information can be dis displayed by using show interface status commands. And if you want to make any changes, we go to the configuration mode. We can assign some VTV passwords, console passwords, auxiliary passwords. And also we can assign some enable and enable secret. 
password or enable password more exactly same like routers so and the other thing we can also assign an IP address to the switch uh, which is for management now if you if you remember in the basic uh, classes what we did we, we did not do anything on the switch as I said switch is a plug and play device there's nothing to configure but if you want we can assign the IP address on the switch but now the question is why we need an IP address on the switch did we do that uh, in our basic concepts or the basic classes we didn't do that now but in the production networks generally every switch will also have an IP address from the same network what we are using now the main reason for that is for telnet access because in order to access the device remotely from the LAN so I want to access the device by sitting here I need to go to this PC I need to assign the IP address and I can access remotely from the LAN in that case there are three conditions we need to know and those conditions are there should be a connectivity between these two devices so if you want to access the device from this computer to the switch we already have some connectivity and the second requirement we need to have an IP address configured on that particular device right now there is no IP address so that's the reason we are going to assign the IP address and the third condition is there should be a VTY password configured so there should be a password configured for VTY line for tenant access now right now there is one condition is already uh, satisfying that is we have a connectivity there's no IP address and we know how to assign the password also so that's the reason we are going to assign the IP address and to assign the IP address we need to go to the interface VLAN 1 VLAN is actually a virtual LAN interface uh, we'll be discussing more on this in our later on concepts by default there is only one LAN that was that is what we call as VLAN it's a virtual interface it's not a physical interface it's a virtual interface so we need to assign the IP address to the VLAN interface now we know how to assign the IP address give IP address IP and submit mask and then no shutdown command why because this VLAN interface will be default it will be in shutdown state we need to give no shutdown to make the interface back to up and then there's one more thing we can assign IP gateway uh, this IP gateway command is more similar to you need to tell who is your router who is my router that is default gateway so and generally we give in this format so now this IP default gateway is more equivalent to the command what we configure on the PCs <coughs> now this is the command now this is equivalent both are same so the IP default gateway command in case of PCs we configure in a separate tab or separate option here but whereas in case of uh, switches we are going to tell who is the gateway with this command so let us let us configure these things on my switch <coughs> so my requirement here is I want to access the switch by sitting in the command line here via telnet that is my requirement here so for that there are three conditions as I said there should be a connectivity so already we have a connectivity here so the second thing uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign uh, assign the IP address so how to assign the IP address interface VLAN 1 and then IP address and that IP address must be from the same network what we are using so I'm going to use 1.50 or 150 whatever it is 255.255.255.0 and then the subnet mask subnet mask is uh, no shutdown already given and then we need to configure the VTY password for telnet access let's say the password is Cisco login that's it now once we give this now I'm going to the command line of the PC now on the command line first I'll try to ping whether I have a connectivity to my switch or not so the ping will ensure that we have we which must have some connectivity between our switch here now I can see the reply is coming it confirms that I'm able to ping and then the next thing I'm going to assign the telnet command and the password is Cisco now enable password is not set I can configure that that's not a problem this is console screen enable secret Cisco uh, there's no login here and then if I if I just you enable here it will ask me the password now I can see I can access the switch as if I'm sitting on the switch I'm, I'm doing some console something like that 
uh, in the production networks mostly in in most of the networks we, we every switch will have one dedicated IP and that IP uh, must be from the same network what we are using in the LAN that's mandatory okay and that should not be used anywhere and if you need to tell who is a gateway then we can use a command called IP default gateway where I'm going to define the gateway address so that this switch can also be accessed remotely from the other side because if you if you want to access uh, from here to any other device also then it should go outside the network in that case the switch should know who is a gateway so this is for accessing the device remotely as well so these are some of the basic configurations we need to know so we can see that all the configurations are exactly similar commands what we did in our uh, in our basic routers and the only thing is we need to assign the IP address on the switch for telnet access but generally it is not required but in terms of production networks we, you, you will find all the switches assigned with some IP addresses so that we can access the device remotely via telnet.